It is a fine sunny morning and busy school time. Students are chatting with each other and making noise in a classroom. Teacher has not joined yet. Suddenly, teacher enters into the classroom with two new students along with her. All the other students are surprised to see that the two girls came with teacher looked exactly the same. They are very much surprised and talking with each other to see the two new girls. Students, please keep quiet. Let me introduce to you your new friends. They are Hia and Ria, two sisters. They will be in your class from today. And please do friendship with them. Ria and Hia take their seat in the classroom. Teacher is now ready to start her lecture in class. Okay, students. Very good morning to all of you. Let's start today's lesson. But all the students are still excited and are whispering with each other. What happened, student? Do you have any problem? One of the students in the classroom raises his hand. Yes, Rick. Do you want to say something? Please tell me. Ma'am, we are very surprised to see Ria and Hia. We are curious to know why they look alike. Another student also stands up. Yes, ma'am. I have a brother who looks different from me, but these girls look the same. How is it possible? Okay, students, please sit down. I understand your curiosity. Let me explain it to you. Ria and Hia are twin sisters. They are two offspring's born at the same time of birth as a pair. But it is not necessary that all of us have our twin counterpart. It depends on the process of transferring genetic materials from parents to offspring during birth. You may also notice that sometimes baby animals look exactly similar to their parent animal, such as in dogs, cats, cows, elephant, etc. Yes, ma'am. We have seen similar spots and design in cat and kitten, or in dog and puppies. You are absolutely right, dear. If you want to know how it happens. You must learn the process of giving birth to offspring and its underlying mechanism. Ma'am, we all want to know it in detail. Okay, students, let's talk about the process of production of new offspring from the parents in detail. I hope it will be clear to you after studying the chapter. Hope you are also interested to know like them. So, let's talk about this. Hello, friends. A very warm welcome to Notebook. I hope the story. Made it clear that we are going to talk about a very interesting chapter. How do organisms reproduce? Different organisms create life on Earth using a different manner. In this chapter, we will learn these in detail. Unlike other essential life processes such as nutrition, respiration, excretion, reproduction is not an essential life process for an organism to survive. In fact, it is an energy-consuming process. Regardless of that, organisms reproduce. Why? Let's try to find the answer in this video. We will also try to find out the molecular mechanism behind reproduction and types of reproduction. Now, the fundamental question is that: What is the definition of reproduction? The process of production of a new generation of individuals of the same species that are physically independent of their parents. is called reproduction there are several reasons for which organisms reproduce these include reproduction is essential for the continuation of life on earth reproduction replaces individuals who died due to aging disease or for any other reason reproduction carries the genetic material of the parents into the offspring and so helps in the continuation of a species Reproduction is linked to the stability of the population of species and helps in the evolution process. Reproduction results in variations in species and their ability to survive in different environment. Reproduction is not just a stage of life, but it constitutes the life history of the species that inhabit the planet Earth. Have you noticed that the organism belonging to the same species looks similar to each other? It is because every organism creates offspring with similar body designs and characteristics. You observe that human beings always give birth to human babies, and pig always gives birth to piglet. 
and so many other examples are also there. Let us discuss how do organism look similar and what is the molecular mechanism behind this. The underlining fact is that a mechanism of production of similar copies of the same blueprint is involved at this point. Thus we can say that reproduction involves making copies of the blueprints of body design at its fundamental level. What is this blueprint made up of? It is the DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid, the genetic material present in the cell nucleus. DNA copying or DNA replication is responsible for similar copies of blueprints in the living organism. So, it is clear that the creation of DNA copy is the basic event in reproduction. Let's explain it a little more. The nucleus of the cells contains chromosomes that carry information about the inheritance of traits that pass from parent to offspring in the form of DNA molecules. The DNA has all the information necessary for protein synthesis. If the information is changed, different proteins will be made which will ultimately lead to altered body design. All major functions in the body and the way we look, how the body is built, etc. is determined by the type of protein in our body. Cells use chemical reactions to build copies of their DNA. This creates two copies of DNA in a reproducing cell. The copying of DNA is accompanied by the creation of additional cellular apparatus and then the DNA copies are separated, each with its own cellular apparatus. In this way, a cell divides to give rise to two cells. Thus, the copying of DNA is very important because it transfers the genetic material from parents to offspring, from generation to generation. It ensures that each daughter cell got an equal amount of DNA. DNA contains the necessary information about protein synthesis. Variations during DNA copying is the basis for evolution. No biochemical reaction is absolutely accurate. Thus, sometimes the DNA copies generated in two daughter cells will be similar but not be exactly the same as the original. It has some variations. This inbuilt tendency of variation during reproduction is the basis for evolution. The variations during the copying of DNA may be either drastic or little. The organism that contains DNA with drastic variation may not survive, while little variations sometimes become beneficial for the organisms for which they can survive in the environment in a better way. These beneficial variations form the basis of evolution. Let us see why this variation is important. The difference in the characters or traits among the individuals of a species is called variation. Variations promote the survival of a species rather than an individual organism. The major advantage of variation to a population is that it increases the chances of its survival in a changing environment. Organisms are normally adapted to live in a particular kind of niche in the ecosystem. But niches can alter its environment. For example, temperature, water level and several factors in the ecosystem can vary. The organism would not be able to survive if they do not adjust to the changes. The variants of the organisms resistant to changes in the environment would survive and grow further. Let's understand this with an example. Think of a bacterial population living in temperate waters. If the water temperature increases by global warming, all of the bacteria would die. But if there are some bacteria with variation and resistant to heat, they may survive and grow further. This is all about DNA copying and variations in species. Now coming to our next topic, types of reproduction. There are several ways by which new organisms are produced from their parents. Some organisms lay eggs like a bird, snake, etc. Whereas some organisms are born from their mother and some organisms born from a single parent. Based on these facts, reproduction can be divided into two broad types such as 
asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction is a type of reproduction in which only one parent gives rise to a new individual. The new individuals produced by this method are genetically and physically identical to their parents. Mostly it occurs in unicellular organisms, example bacteria, protozoa, some plants, example algae, fungi, bryophytes, etc. and certain multicellular organisms, example sponges and hydra. The mode of reproduction that involves two individuals, one male and one female, is known as sexual reproduction. In this type of reproduction, sex cells or gametes are produced in both male and female that fuse to form a new organism. Animals like dog, cats, lions, giraffe, humans, some flowering plants, etc. all reproduce sexually. So friends, we have now come to the end of this topic. I hope you have enjoyed it a lot. Thank you for watching. We will see you again in our next video. Till then, happy learning and stay safe. Goodbye.